All right, what's up, guys? This is Hardware Junkie Joe. Today, I'm going to show you how to test a motherboard before you install it in your case. The reason why I do this is because if there does happen to be something wrong, it's a lot easier to work with set up like this rather than after it's already in the case and especially if say you have to RMA it well it's easier just to put it right back in the box and send it back than it is to take it back out of the case yeah it's just easier to me it is the first thing you need to know is that you need to have it on uh, some kind of anti-static you know area and uh, you also need to have some kind of test bench. Um, I don't have a test bench. I know a lot of people don't. So I'm just going to use the motherboard box. Um, got that tip from Linus. Uh, also, you know, I'm not really going to be installing all this stuff like this video card. I'm not going to install that. I'm just seeing if the, the motherboard will post. Uh, just a quick overview of what I'm going to be putting in this. I've got some Crucial Ballistics DDR3 1333 RAM. Uh, it's 2 gig, 1 gig on each strip. I've got a Core i3 2120. This is an HD5770. This is an ECS H6H2M, as you can read right there. I got a CX430 by Corsair. And that's pretty much it. Old ass Dell monitor back there that I'm going to see. And uh, it's, it's just going to show me if the motherboard posts or not. So, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install the CPU or the processor. Uh, so, I'm just going to show you guys how to do that real quick. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so... I'm going to do this the best that I can by myself uh, on the Intel 1155 socket. You've got this little arm right here. So just pull out like that and release the, the metal little latch here. This is just a protective cover for the pins on the inside. So basically just pop that off like so. And I like to leave it right here just in case on your processor okay the best way that I can explain it see these little notches right here and right here well there's little notches right here right here Basically, we're just going to line those up, and it should just fall right into place. No pressure whatsoever. just falls right into place. Then, you want to get this plastic out of the way. Put this back down. Okay. And then you want your teeth right here to go underneath. This, this bolt or screw, whatever you want to call it, the star head screw. Okay, and you're going to push this down. It's going to be a little tight. This is actually going to bend a little bit. And you want to put it underneath this bar, and then that holds it into place. All right, and that's how you install the processor on the bottom of this processor or this CPU cooler that came with the Intel processor. It actually it's already pre-applied with thermal paste so we can skip that step which if you don't know how to do that and you have to there are plenty of YouTube videos on how to do that alright so I'm gonna take some TP with a little bit of 99 percent alcohol I'm just gonna clean this processor off make sure that there's no oils from my fingers or any kind of dirt anything that could be on there get it once with the wet side once with the dry side 
just to make sure that there's no TP particles on it. I'm going to blow them a little bit. Alright, it should be good. Yes, it should be good. Okay, so basically on here, this is pretty easy installation of a CPU cooler. There is one, two, three, four holes here. There's four little pins here. Just stick them in the holes. Line them, line them, stick them in. So they snap into place. And just turn them. Turn your little. Oh, can't see that. Turn these little deals here. Kind of tightens it down. And make sure it's tight. And we're done. Okay, so I can't forget to plug in our fan. So we've got a, a four pin power connector right here. We're just going to take that and plug it in right there. Or put the thing in the thing. Some of you may know what I'm talking about when I say that. Just to test this board. Um, we're only going to put one stick of RAM in. Because if we put more than one in, there could be a problem. And it could just be memory. And it's just a little easier to figure out if you just put one in. Okay, so installing memory, pretty easy. Push your little tabs out. There's a notch right here. There's a notch right here. This way, the notch does not line up. That will not work. So we flip it around. The notch lines up with the notch. So we stick it in like this, stick it in straight, and then just push down to the, the white tabs, click into place, and we're done. Yay! On to the next step. Next step is just plugging in a few cables. So I'm going to plug in my HDMI to the monitor. Sorry for getting in the way of the camera. Okay. We're going to go over to our power supply. We need our 24 pin. Got to have that hooked up. I'm putting it in the correct way. Oh, by the way, you got a little latch right here. Plug in, there's a little notch right here. You make sure those line up. If you don't already know that. So, uh, just push it in until it's flat all the way around, until it sinks all the way in. We've got our 8 pin power connector. Just plug it in, and it goes right here. And it's the same deal, it's got a little latch right here. And on this side right here, it's got a same deal as the 24 pin. Stick it in until it clicks into place. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Also, um, yeah, we don't need to plug in anything else. Not in order for testing. Now on the power supply, you want to make sure that you plug in your, your power to the back. And I don't, as you can see, I do not have it plugged in. Do not plug any of this stuff in while this is plugged in. That is bad. No. Do not do that. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, your first question is going to be, how do I turn this thing on? 
Well, later on, whenever you get ready to plug it into your case, you're going to be running cables from a power switch and plugging it in right here where it says F underscore panel. That means front panel. Let's see if I can get that just a little bit closer. Okay. Now right here, you've got two pins that are your positive and your negative. Now when you press that button, basically all it's doing is touching those two pins together to create a current that tells CPU to, or the tells the motherboard to turn on. So what you can do is don't use this. Use a flat-headed screwdriver. I'm just using this for an example. Once you have it plugged in, you have your power supply turned on and everything, you can just take it and touch those two pins with your screwdriver. Just touch it like that and it'll come right on. Luckily for me, I have a power button and a reset button right here. So hopefully those work and I don't have to do that trick. And of course right now I do not have the power supply plugged in. I was just showing you how to do that. I'll be right back uh, for the final results so that we can see if this baby's going to turn on. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Alright, so what we got to do is make sure our power supply is on. Plug it in. And then, like I said, you can use a little screwdriver trick. Or, there she goes. Oh, maybe not. Oh, okay. And <laughs> she's posting. Oh my god. It's amazing. <laughs> that is cool. Alright, so the board posts. It means it's good. You can go ahead and take everything and uh, install it into your case. And then install your windows and have fun. Because that's what it's all about, baby. It's having fun. Well, this has been a very awesome video for me. I was really hoping that was going to happen. So I appreciate you guys for watching. This is Hardware Junkie Joe saying subscribe and like first. And then peace. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you. And the only, or really the only way to turn it off which is, you know, kind of obvious once you know, is to either unplug the plug to the power or the power supply, or you can just flip the switch on the back. It's as easy as that.